You've learned in my most recent videos on Lightroom Basics how to import your images and how to find and categorize your images using collections. This week, I'm gonna show you how to set up and use keywords. So stay with me till the end as I'll show you how to use metadata supplied by your camera to even have a more powerful tool to find your images. All that, coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheiden, professional photographer, showing you some of the basics of a program I use every day, Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, I've been using Lightroom from way back when it first came out, back in 2006. As a professional photographer, I had to have something that would help me find images out of the thousands and thousands of images that I shot every year. Before Lightroom came out, I was using a program called Cumulus. This was simply a database for photographers to hold their photographs. While it had a few problems, it worked reasonably well as a database for images. In the early days, I even attended a focus group put on by Adobe to solicit ideas on what professional photographers needed in the way of a photographic database library. This was a pretty cool day where a few professional photographers gathered together and where we were able to create a theoretical master wish list of what we all wanted in a database program. Suffice it to say, none of us that attended that day were coming up with ideas like the ability to process raw images or simple sky selection at the click of a mouse like Lightroom can easily do today. But what we all did request was a simple way to find our images based on things like keywords. That way, if we were looking for, say, all the images that had mountains in the images, with a few keystrokes, we could later be looking at just all of our mountain images. Today I'm gonna to show you how to use keywords and how easy they are to use once you set up a few things first. And stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna show you how to search by the way of metadata. And this doesn't require any put input on your part at all. The camera you use produces it automatically. Like with any kind of database, you get out of it what you put into it. And that's no exception when it comes to the use of keywords. The more data you assign to an image, the more you can search on. You'll see in a minute how streamlined this work can be. So let's get started with keywords. All right, so let's get into the basics of keywording. So we've got our catalog here set up. We know that we've got collections over here that we learned in the past videos over here. But what we're gonna do is go into all photographs, which is found right up here, all photographs. We're gonna look at all of them. And in this case, uh, we've come to a couple, like here's some moose pictures. There's two or three moose pictures, not great, but their pictures. So what we're going to do is keyword these. And so we come into keywording. Now over here in this panel, you've got a list. You've got keywording, keywording list, metadata, and comments. These are things that you can add to your images. But uh, if you open these up, they'll end up stretching down and you'll have lots of things that you'll have to scroll through. So what I like to do is put this on what's called solo mode. So that's clicking anywhere up in here, right clicking, and then go to solo mode. And what that does is that opens just one window at a time, which I kind of like that. So one window, window at a time, and then you're just working in a simple kind of an architecture. So we've got this image sitting right here. We're gonna add a keyword. So let's go ahead and add, we're just gonna add one keyword and we're gonna say, uh, we'll call it Moose, M-O-O-S-E, okay? So that's a keyword we're gonna add into that. Now we can also, we also know that this was shot at Grand Teton. So we're gonna, um, put in Grand Teton as a, as a keyword as well. So now let's go back into all of our pictures. And so this one you see has no keywords at all. This one has the keywords. You can see them over here. but this one doesn't have any, but it's the same image. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come over here real simply and we're gonna add keywords. So down here is keyword suggestion. So as you put in keywords, it'll give you more, those same keywords will pop up and say, hey, you know, maybe this will work. And sure enough, Moose and Grand Teton will work. And once you've used it, it disappears from the suggestions because it'll come up in here. And we can do the same here, Moose and Grand Teton. So now as we go through, here's one, of an elk. 
So we're gonna put in here elk. And we also know that that was at Grand Teton, so let's go ahead and click on that simple suggestion and add elk to it. I mean, add Grand Teton to it, it's not a moose. So the rest of these, what we're gonna do is we're gonna also uh, add these to the, to the same images. So we can go through here and we can click elk and we can click Grand Teton and we could select all of these and then go elk and Grand Teton. And now all of these have the same keywords uh, that we just added. So a pretty simple way that we can go create keywords and then add them as we go. So here's some more. These are from um, uh, the Grand Tetons again. These are some mountain pictures. So let's go ahead and select all of those. And we're gonna put in Grand Teton and we're gonna put a comma and then mountain. And what else do we have? I think we've got clouds there. And that's a pretty good description. We can put fall colors. How about that? We got some fall colors there. Um, let's go fall. See, it's uh, it's asking you over here. Well, do you want to add this to it? So it's it's trying to help you add keywords to all of your images. So let's take a look. Now we can see that each image in this series here has. Clouds, fall, Grand Tetons, and mountains. So as we go through all of our uh, images, and when we go through all photographs, we can see lots of different images. Okay, so these were uh, shots of a bear. So let's go ahead and select all those bear pictures, and we're gonna put in black bear. And that was also shot in Grand Teton, so we'll put that in. And uh, here is another uh, image that we took. This is part of a panel, so we can uh, easily put in a uh, panel. And we can also put in Grand Teton. There it is, it pops right up when you start to type it. And you can just click on it and have it added to the, the image, or you can click on it down here, whichever you prefer. So now we're, we're getting a lot of these images keyworded and you can see it goes pretty fast once you start putting them all in. Here's some other ones from Yosemite. So we're going to select all these from Yosemite. These are half dome. So we'll come in here and we're going to put Yosemite and we're going to put half dome and we're going to put river. Also going to put Merced River. So all of these are keywords that we're adding and you can see down here in the keyword suggestions, this is really starting to grow and that'll be real simple for us to just clickety click through that. So uh, as we're going through here, here's images of the hawk that we talked about last time. So we're gonna put in hawk and helps if you spell it right. And then we'll put in Cooper's hawk because that's the type of hawk that it is. And now again, we're gonna take that and just click all of those, make those all the same. Uh, and we're gonna, let's see, we don't want the Merced River in there. So that's a pretty easy way to remove uh, any kind of keywords that you come across, okay? So now we're, we've keyworded a lot of these images. Here's some other of Yosemite. We'll go ahead and keyword those. And again, we've already clicked Yosemite, so we can click that. That's uh, Yosemite, it's uh, the Merced River, and it's also Half Dome. So let's find Half Dome, it's right there. And now we've, we've clicked on and created all of these with keywords, which is really great. Simple way to do it. Now, once you've keyworded everything, and a bit, the good way of practice of doing this is when you, you load your images in, go through and keyword them as you bring them in if you've got time. So the way you search for this is you go for all photographs, go up to text, and here you have the ability to search for different types of things. So you can search all fields or you can search for keywords. So let's search by keyword and we'll click on here and we'll put half dome. So even just clicking on half of that word, we didn't even get the dome, you'll get all of the images in your whole catalog that have those keywords. So again, if we come back here and we put in moose, all those moose pictures come up. 
So super simple to find anything. And remember, we're searching in all photographs. And I think that's important to note because as you're searching, now you could search inside of here. If we were searched inside of here and we went to text and we pulled down and did keywords and we put moose, nothing comes up. The reason it doesn't come up is because we're in the, in the collection, not the whole catalog. But if we go up into all photographs and we go in and type, type in our text of whatever it is we want to search by moose, then those pictures will come up. So it's a pretty simple way that we can go through Lightroom and add keywords. It's real simple once you start doing it. They're all there. You just click on them and then your images are propagated with keywords and make things really easy to find. So I personally think that's a great way to go. And the more information you put in, the easier it is to find. So if you're looking for all your river pictures, if you go all over the country, you're gonna get all kinds of river pictures. You can put them in there and start sorting down from that way. You can obviously make a sort and then build a collection if you'd like, like what you learned last time, build a collection and put that in there and that, that'll be something that you can easily access those images as well. Today you're learning how to find specific images in your catalog. At some point you'll be processing your raw images and when it comes to that, one of your first considerations should be the sharpness of your favorite images. While sharpness is something that can, can be addressed in Lightroom to some level, a razor sharp image begins in the camera. Learning what techniques you need to employ while shooting will ensure more razor sharp images when you're finding them in Lightroom. This is why I wrote the book, Razor Sharp Nature Photography. It's an instantly downloadable ebook, only available on my website, imagelight.com. The book is full of in-camera techniques like focus stacking, choosing the best aperture and shutter speed, as well as post-processing techniques that'll take your images to that razor sharp level. This ebook is designed to be downloaded on your computer or even your tablet or phone. That way you can have a reference on hand while you're out shooting. Once you download it on your device, there's no internet connection needed to reference it anytime you like. To pick up your copy of Razor Sharp Nature Photography, click over to my website, imagelight.com. Just go to the digital products page and you'll see it right there. I'll include a link in the description below. Another way to find things in Lightroom is by metadata. So as we go in this panel down here, we'll click down on metadata and you can see all of this metadata from when I shot this image. Any image that you're, uh, let's take this one here. You can see the date that I shot it, the size of the image, uh, the camera that I used, the ISO, all the information about it. Now in yours, you may not see that. So what you need to do is you need to customize some of the information in your metadata. So up here is a pull down panel. So here's default and that'll give you some information, the data when it was shot, which is also helpful too, because let's say if you were looking for an image from say Tahoe or something, you could say, well, when did we go to Tahoe? We went to Tahoe on November 5th. So let's search for all the November 5th shots. And that, that can come up that way. That would be a way you could search. But in this case, uh, instead of default, I like to use XF and that is all the image information that's brought in by your camera. So it gives me not only the camera, the lens, uh, the f-stop, the whole thing. It's really a great way to search. So when you come up to all photographs, we can go up to metadata and search by metadata. And you can see here that all of this information is propagated up here, which is really great. So if I wanted to look for all the shots I shot with the Z9, I can click on that and those will come up. I can look for all the shots that I shot with the D5 and that'll come up. I can look for um, go back into metadata. I can search for all three cameras and I can say everything that was shot with a 600 millimeter. I can see everything that was shot with a, um, well, the 14 to 24, for instance. So that will give you all of that information. Now, obviously I didn't have to type any of this stuff in. This came in with the camera when you brought those images in and it's all there. You just have to look for it to see where it is. And if you put in this XF data, which is the information brought in by the camera, then you're going to get all of that information right there and you can search by it, which makes it really super convenient. So those are a couple of ways to search and find images in Lightroom. And as you go forward, I think you're going to find this is a pretty easy way to find your images. And now you're on your way. And the next thing we're going to learn is how to develop them. 
If you're getting something out of the content of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button, then subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of my next video here on YouTube. If you're looking for more nature photography content, check out my podcast, The Nature Photography Podcast, located on any of the leading podcast players. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, etc., you'll find it there. Just search for The Nature Photography Podcast and look for the Bald Eagle logo. And don't forget to use the word the in the search. For some reason, that's important. Thanks for watching and listening. <laughs>